Era la víspera de Navidad y todo en la casa era paz. No se oía ni un ruidito, ni siquiera chillar a un ratón. Junto al fuego pendían las calcetines, los calcetines vacíos, seguros que pronto vendría Santa Claus. Sobre la cama acurra, acurracaditos y bien abrigados, los niños dormían mientras dulces y bombones danzaban alegres entre sus sueños. Mamá con pañoleta, yo con gorro de dormir. Enciábamos apenas a un largo sueño invernal. De pronto en el prado surgió un alboroto. Salté de la cama y fui a ver qué pasó. Volé como un rayo hasta la ventana. Salé la cortina y tiré del poste. Blanca y suave era la nieve y dulce el brillo de la luna. Parecía me, mediodía, mediodía en nuestra tranquila vida. Cuando para mí asombró, vi pasar a los a lo lejos, ocho pequeños renos y un diminuto trineo. Conducía un viejito, vi, vivaracho y veloz, y, les, y supe enseguida que debía ser Santa Claus. Más rápido que las águilas, sus corceles volaban, y él silbaba y gritaba a sus renos llamándolos, vamos destello y relámpago. Adelante, gambito, danzarón y cupido. Jala duro, cometa, lleguen lejos, estrella y lucero. A la cima del techo, a la cima del muro, deprisa, deprisa, que los niños me esperan. Cual hojas secas de un árbol remontaban al cielo, al labrar a su paso algunas barreras. Volaron así hasta postarse en la casa Santa Claus, los renos y trino con juguetes. En un parapadar sobre el teco, techo, escuché los pequeños cascos de los renos patar. Y al, y al voltear la cabeza entre cecinas y troncos, por la chimenea cayó Santa Claus. Abrigado con pies de la cabeza los, a los pies, Santa Claus se encontraba todo. Sucio de Olin. Cuando, ¿cuál ropa verajo con un saco a la espada? Descargó su equipaje y se puso a jugar. Como brillo Baban sus ojos como sus labios se sonríen. Había tan gracioso nariz parcía una cabeza, sus mejillas estaban rosados y su barba tan blanca recordaba la nieve. Su cara era amplia y cuando reía temblaba su panza redonda, como un gran tazón de jalea. Al verlo jugando cordinflón y rollizo, como un duende gracioso, me reí sin querer. Santa Claus guiñó un ojo y sacudió la cabeza de tal forma que supe que no tenía que temer. No habló ni una palabra y volvió a su trabajo. Llenó bien los calcetines, inclinó la cabeza, arrugó la nariz y después de un brinco salió por la chimenea. Saltó su trinado y silba sus corceles que ar arrancaron volando. Cual hojas de un árbol que él viendo arrastró. A lo lejos pude escuchar que exclamaba feliz navidad a todos. me Sarah playing Jingle Bells with my clarinet. <laughs>
fun. Every who down in Whoville like Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The, Gr the Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now, please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be, perhaps, that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas, it's, it's practically here. Then he growled his, with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming, I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow he knew, but whatever the reason, his heart or his shoe, he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the Who's, staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown, and then the warm, lighted windows below in their town. For he knew who down is the Whoville beneath was busy, was busy now hanging a mis mistletoe hearth worth. All the who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys, and then oh the noise, oh the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated: the noise, 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 noise. Then the who's young and old would sit down to a feast, and then they'd feast and they'd feast and they'd feast. Feast, feast, feast. They would feast on who pudding and rare who roast beast, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they do something he liked least of all. Every who down in Hoodville, the the tall and the small would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing, and they st they stand hand in hand, and the Who's would start singing. They sing, and they sing, and they sing, 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 sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this Who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why for 53 years have I've put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming, but how? Then he got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarred, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said. If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog, Max, then took some red thread and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. I know just what to do, the Grinch laughed in his throat. And he made a quick Santa Claus hat and coat. And he chuckled and clucked. What a great Grinchy trick with this coat and this hat. I look just like Saint Nick. Then the Grinch said, Get up! And the sleigh started down toward the home where the Hoos lay a snooze in their town. Then... He loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on the ramshackle sleigh, and he hitched up old Max. All their windows were dark. Quiet snow filled the air. All the who were all dreaming sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square, this is the top number one. The old... Grinchy claws hissed, and he climbed to the roof, empty bugs in his fist. <sighs> then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two, then he snuck his head out of the fireplace, 
where a little who stockings hung, hung in a row. These these stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. One. Then he slithered and slucked with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room. And he took every present, pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkboard checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn, and plums, and he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch, very nimbly, stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the Who's Feast. He took the Who's Pudding. He took the Roast Beast. He cleaned out the icebox as quick as a flash white. The Grinch even took their last can of hoof hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove when, shove, when he heard a small sound like the hoof dough. He turned around fast and he saw a small who. Little Cindy Lou who, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter. Who got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Sandy Claus, why, why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? And his fib fooled the child. Then he patted her head and he got her a drink. And he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. But you know, the old Grinch was so smart and so slick, he thought a lick and he could be quick. Why, well, my sweet little tot, the fig Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home on my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, then I'll bring it back here. Then the last thing he he took was the log from the their fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls, he left nothing but looks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he took the same thing to the others whose houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other whose mouses. It was quarter past dawn, all the who's were still a bed, all the who's still a snooze. When he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags, and the tinsel, the trimming, the tapping. 3,000 feet up the side of the crumpet. He rode with his lord to the tip top to dump it. Poo poo to the who's he was grinch easily coming there finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They they're just waking up. I know just what they do. Their months will hang open a minute or two. Then the who's down in the who vial will all cry boo hoo. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his car, and he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why this sound sounded merry? It couldn't be so, but it was merry, very. 
He started down at a whole bill. The Grinch popped his eyes, and then he shook. What he saw was shocking surprise. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch with the Grinch feet ice cold in the snow stood puzzling the puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, box, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till the puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch, that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning, through the bright morning light, and he brought back the toys and the food for the feast, and he... He himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. People live for the fortune. Some people live just for the fame. Some people live for the power. Yeah. Some people live just to play the game. 
Some people think that the physical thing is defined what's within I'm feeling the before that's life so full, so full of a superficial. Some people want it. People search for a fountain Promises forever young Some people need three dozen roses And that's the only way to prove your love And in the world on a silver platter God, would it be with no one to share with no one who truly cares for me? Some people want it all, but I don't want nothing at all. If it ain't you, baby, if I ain't got you, baby, some It was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care and hoped that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a longer winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new-fallen snow gave the lustre of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and a tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. Most, more rapid than eagles, his courses and came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry as that before the wild hurricane fly, when they met with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the house top, the courses they flew with the sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and I was, and was turning around, down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, 
and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes how they twinkled, his dimples how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His drool little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the, little, the beard of his chin was white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a ref. He had a broad face, a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old bell, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and the twist of his head seemed gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, and filled all the stockings, and turned with a jerk, and laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of his thistle. But I heard him explain, ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night.